So this next segment of the uh, event is titled The Future of the Interfaith Community Service Projects. And with us are some distinguished guests, including Dr. Kenneth Bedell from the United States Department of Education, uh, Ms. Shirley Jones from the U.S. Department of Education, and Ms. Marina Hussain. Um, Dr. Ken Bedell uh, is ordained in the United Methodist Church. He led congregations for 16 years in New York, uh, Maryland and Ohio, and he's taught in the junior high, high school, collegiate, and the, uh, theological school levels. As a volunteer with the Mennonite, with the Mennonite Central Committee, he taught high school in uh, Swaziland. In his capacity as executive secretary of the International Association of Methodist Schools, Colleges, and Universities, uh, Dr. Bedell visited schools and colleges in Argentina, Brazil, uh, Korea, Mozambique, Kenya, and uh, Zimbabwe. He's the author of five books and numerous articles and scholarly papers. Uh, his book titled, entitled Different Ships, Same Boat uh, on Ethics was published by the World Association for Christian Communication. For five years, he edited the annual yearbook of American and Canadian churches for the National Council of Churches. And after receiving his PhD in sociology, he became active in the Religious Research Association where he served on the executive committee. As an early promoter of the use of technology in education and the church, he was the founding member or the founding president of the Church Computer Users Network in the mid-1980s. He's married to the former Catherine Hill. They have two daughters, Charity Pelletier and Sarah Cook, and three grandchildren. So without further ado, Dr. Kenneth Bedell. First of all, Dennis, I just want to thank you for the wonderful warning about becoming friends with Abdel El Sadiq. I think that you may have just saved my life. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm going to take that very, very seriously. I have the great honor of working on the President's Interfaith and Community Service Campus Challenge in the Department of Education that we already heard from President Timmermans about the, giving the description of it. It's my honor to, to be there and to send out messages encouraging Pili Parv to organize a summer uh, meeting when people come together and to learn about some of the things that are actually happening on the ground. I, I, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I had to call Trinity Christian College to figure out something. You know, they, they probably had left something out in their report or something. I don't know what it was. But the person who answered the phone, I explained where, why I was calling and what it related to, said, Oh, oh, I'm sure Dr. Timmons will get right back to you. Every Saturday, he goes out with the students himself to cut down the trees and to be, to be, part, of, uh, to be part of this uh, program. I, I know that, that doesn't, it isn't every college president that was involved to that level of saying, this, this is something that makes a difference not only to, to my students, but uh, to the world. As I was thinking about coming to kind of share that spirit of what does it mean to really get involved in interfaith uh, community service. I was reminded of an experience I had last September, it's actually September 12th, in Salt Lake City. Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan decided that he was going to do a back to school tour and to take a bus. Uh, from California back to Washington, D.C. and to stop along the way. And he asked different people in the department to have events that were along the route that he was taking with the bus to kind of build up. You know, it's it largely a press event. He wanted to have things that the, the press would be interested in and that people would, would come and learn 
all of the things that are happening in education across the country. And he actually asked us to propose ideas of things that we might do. And so I proposed that in Salt Lake City, we would have a demonstration of a program that's called Face to Faith. Now, Face to Faith is something that former, uh, uh, what was he, Prime Minister, I think, of England, Tony Blair, mm -hmm. has initiated after he left office, he set up a foundation and has been encouraging religious cooperation and religious understanding all across the world. And this program is really quite simple. What he does is recruits schools in different countries, particularly Arab majority countries and Israel, to have a program where they meet with students from another country, including the United States and some European countries, and as I'll mention in a moment, the Philippines, where the students talk to each other through uh, the internet. They mostly use this program Skype. And then they have a website where they can exchange as the students can get to know. These are primarily high school students, but they also have a college program. So I said, well, Salt Lake City would be a great place to demonstrate this as the secretary is going across the country and wants all these demonstrations of good things that are happening. And so we set up in Salt Lake City, and I got uh, the deputy secretary of education uh, <coughs> to come and be part of this. Uh, and we had the head of the, uh, it's called the superintendent of education for Utah, and there's a number of press people that we arranged to come. And we're, we did actually hold a demonstration where the students in this uh, Utah school, high school students, were talking to high school students, in this case, in the Philippines. Well, the program starts like uh, it, it always does. There's a moderator, and in this case, because it's all over the computer, the moderator was in London. And the moderator, uh, first of all, explains the way this, the setup was going to be. And I'd like to just lift that up as the first component of effective cross-cultural and interfaith experiences or engagement, that there really needs to be a setting. And that's what you have provided with uh, Mishnah, is, is that they... People have a place where there, something can happen, where interfaith engagement is possible. And that's what's happening today, at this moment. There's, there's a, an, some kind of opportunity where interfaith engagement can happen. Well, after that's kind of set up, the this, this second characteristic of, of at least successful interfaith engagement uh, it's because there's specific resources that are provided. In this case, the face-to-faith -face provides a context for the engagement. And they have special programs that uh, include uh, programs about uh, global warming and uh, about uh, peace in the Middle East, about other environmental issues. And so that there's a, a uh, resources that are available. And, uh, there are incredible resources right now available uh, in many places for interfaith engagement. And, and I just think it's, it's really great what not only uh, events like this, do, but, but the, all of you that are engaged here are involved in making it possible for some of those resources to both be, uh, be brought to the sh Chicago area and, and in some cases even to, uh, are being produced. So that, that's really the second characteristic of engagement, of interfaith engagement. And then the leader, the, the facilitator, explained the first rule of what was going to happen in this engagement with these uh, students. And the first rule was that, when, that they were going to talk back and forth. One group of, from one school, a student, an individual student, would ask a question or, or make a statement. And then when that student was finished, he or she would say, thank you. 
and then it went to the other side. So it went from Salt Lake City to the Philippines and from the Philippines back to Salt Lake City. But the signal that the person was done talking was always thank you. And, and that's the other, as the, the, the third, I would say, aspect of at least successful interfaith in, engagement is that it is listening. Now, we've got these television programs now that are uh, where the people will talk about politics and they interrupt each other and they, they talk over each other. That's not engagement, that's entertainment. And when you, when you see the sports, the sports programs where they'll argue about this team is doing that and that, and, they, and, they, and, and they're not really engaging each other, that's entertainment. But engagement is where people listen and wait for the person to say, Thank you, and then go on. And then the moderator gave the, the next instruction, which I think is the fourth component of successful interfaith engagement. And that was to say, when everyone speaks, they always speak from the perspective of I. I believe, I think, I've had this experience. And never say, well, we, as if a person can speak, you know, I, I'm a Christian, as if I could speak for the Christians. Uh, no, I can speak for myself, my own faith, the faith that, that I have. And never speak for, for them, they, those people. That it's always, this is, this is my experience. This is, this is what I've seen. This is what I think. This is what, this is what I believe. And it's out of that willingness then to, to share uh, from our own personal hearts, from who, what we are and who we believe. Well, I, I want to move on because what happened next was that there was this back and forth. And, and so we had the, the components were all set up for successful interfaith uh, experience and engagement. And the students were very politely asking questions. Uh, do you have religion in your school? And the, and the uh, mostly Mormon students in Salt Lake City said, well, no, we don't have any services here. And the, and the students in the Philippines who were actually going to a Jesuit school were mostly Catholic, talked about going to Mass at school. One one. It was all very polite, back and forth, making I statements and, and then asking questions and finishing with thank you. And we are about a half an hour into it, and I was sitting there thinking, Oh no, nothing's happening. This is really boring. They're just, I mean, they're just they're being polite to each other. That's I'm glad they're polite to each other, you know. But uh, but they're not really engaging, and they and you can even see the students weren't weren't even this, but they were they were doing nothing. And 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 just as I was sitting there, I, I, I'll have to confess, I started to pray. But no. We've got, this, you know, we've got the head of education of Utah here. I've got the deputy secretary of education of the United States here. I've got the press here. I've set this whole thing up. It can't be boring. You know, you gotta, I, well, I do believe in the power of prayer. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, the young people started to engage. And they started to engage at the moment that the Catholic students in the Philippines started telling about a project that they had to raise food, uh, collections of food for people who had suffered from a flood that had been there locally, and that they had collected this huge amount of food and had initiated that and had done that. And the students, the, the mostly Mormon students in Utah, started to get excited about this. And, and they said, oh, that's wonderful I, we're, you know, that you would do that as students. And they started to talk that, that uh, I would say now I want to go on, not from what makes engagement, good engagement, but when is it really succeeding is when people start to talk about and, and service can be a place where they can see that they really are sharing in something. This, and, and it was fun to watch these students in Salt Lake City get excited about what the students in the Philippines were doing. That they were really sharing something. They shared that there was something that, that they saw that was important. The next thing that happened was that the students in the, uh, in both sides started to talk about how they might 
do this together, do a project together. And I think that's the second signal of success, of real interfaith engagement, is when people see that they have something that they can share to do in common. And all of a sudden, these mostly Mormon students and the mostly Catholic students from across the globe were having a conversation about how they could do a project together that would help the people who are suffering from, from this flood in the Philippines. And then a really strange thing happened. They, one student started uh, sharing with another student about how they felt uncomfortable because they were a minority in their situation. This happened to be a non-Mormon student in Utah. And another student in the, in the uh, Philippines started sharing across the same thing of, of his experience of not being a Catholic going to a Jesuit school and what, and what that was like. I think that's a third indication of when there is really sharing across interfaith lines, is when there's a sharing of the things that are really troubling, troubling to us. Not just that, that you know, isn't it nice to be kind of doing all this together, but, but a sharing at the deepest level of, of our concerns. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, pause here. I, I think I, I'm sorry. I had four things. So for Trinity College to know, you're only supposed to have three things for <laughs> characteristics <laughs> that impact a successful interfaith engagement. But I did keep it to three. I looked up what was successful. So I hope I'll get a few points. A few points for that. We are going to just pause for a couple of seconds if people want to uh, uh, have a question either for me or what I would like better is, a, is just a response. As it's so exciting to be here to, to uh, share with you in this engagement of uh, interfaith, interfaith engagement. So.